Denali Park Rangers say three experienced climbers who recently made it to the summit of Denali sent out an SOS message to rangers after they became hypothermic and were unable to descend the mountain. As of tonight, two are still stuck after several attempts of the park helicopter pilot attempting to rescue them. On Thursday, May 30th, 2024, a climber stood at 19,600 feet on the upper slopes of Denali. The wind raged around him, whipping against his frostbitten face as he raised his arms above his head, waving at a helicopter struggling to stabilize above him. The climber was suffering from the early stages of hypothermia and had called for rescue two days prior. His climbing partner was in a snow cave just behind him, and if they had any chance to survive, they would need help. But the high wind and brutal temperatures had stopped any rescue from happening until Thursday evening. The problem was their rescue would not quite go as planned. This is their story. Denali is the tallest mountain in North America, towering at 20,310 feet above sea level. Located in South Central Alaska, it lies about 130 miles north-northwest of Anchorage. Formed around 60 million years ago by tectonic uplift, Denali is the centerpiece of Denali National Park and Preserve. What makes Denali so difficult to climb is its location. The peak is infamous for having some of the most unpredictable weather in the world. One of the most famous quotes on the mountain is, there is no such thing as bad weather, only inappropriate clothing. Of course, the altitude, environment, and technical climbing also play a part in making North America's tallest peak an advanced climb. Nearly 1,000 climbers each year take on the peak through May and June, with 60 to 70 percent usually reaching the summit. But don't let the success rates fool you. Denali is a beast of a mountain. Since its first summit, at least 96 climbers have lost their lives on the peak, with a fatality rate of 3 climbers for every 1,000 summit attempts. There were 350 plus climbers on Denali's west buttress route in May. The typical climb to the summit spans approximately 3 weeks, with most of that time acclimatizing to the high altitudes so that each climber's body can be prepared to make a summit push. Inadequate preparation can lead to high altitude sickness or a lack of oxygen from the thinner air, which can be fatal. The West Buttress Route is the most popular on Denali. It is a steady, gradual ascent with little vertical climbing. The route isn't considered highly technical, but the miles of glaciated terrain, extreme temperatures, hidden crevasses, and just time spent on the mountain increase the risk of accidents. A climber would normally fly into base camp and then begin the trek through the lower glacier to Camp 1 at about 7,800 feet. This is typically a 5-mile walk while carrying approximately 100 110 pounds of gear. Then you begin the trek to Camp 2 through the upper Cahiltona Glacier. The most dangerous part of this section is falling into a hidden crevasse that may be covered with snow. Then the real climb begins at Camp 3 at 11,200 feet, Camp 4 at 14,200 feet, and finally High Camp at 17,200 feet. The final stretch to the summit is the most difficult as you are climbing a steep slope to Denali Pass, then eventually the summit. In late May, a team of three Malaysian climbers would take on Denali. Like the other expeditions on the mountain, they had been preparing to attempt a summit push for two weeks at this point, acclimatizing to the high altitudes. And there was news that late May could offer a small weather window where climbers would get the chance to summit. Zulkifli bin Yusuf was the youngest of the three, at 36 years old, with the other two climbers being a decade older. The trio was planning on making their final trip up the mountain over a few days in late May, with May 27th being their anticipated summit day. Their ascent up the mountain was pretty ordinary. The trio would begin in base camp, pass through the glacier, and start ascending via the various camps on the West Buttress route. Like most mountaineering stories, nothing seems wrong until the very last moment. After reaching the high camp, the trio would take a short break to rest before beginning their final push to the summit. This is when the early signs of issues would begin. They were all exhausted from climbing at this point, but Yusuf's health in particular was declining rapidly. Don't get me wrong, he was still there and wanted to push for the summit, but it became obvious out of the three climbers, he was struggling the most. In the early hours of the morning on May 27th, the trio would begin their final trek from high camp 
Denali Pass, then eventually across the football field. At some point during the early afternoon, the three climbers would reach the summit of North America's tallest peak, accomplishing the goal they had all set out to do months earlier. It was during their descent that they would begin to run into issues. Yusuf began suffering from high altitude sickness, and his body was beginning to fail. If he didn't get off the mountain soon, well, he didn't have very long. The issue was that he was also becoming delirious, making descending the mountain nearly impossible. Over the next several hours, the trio would labor down the slope, making their way towards high camp. But as the hours passed and eventually the sun set, they knew that they were in trouble. It wasn't just Yusuf who was struggling at this point. All three climbers were suffering from the beginning stages of hypothermia. It was in the late hours of May 27th when Yusuf collapsed, and the other two climbers knew they had no choice. They had to call for a rescue. The weather had continuously gotten worse over the last few hours, and the wind was whipping against their faces. They had only one option, to dig a snow cave to escape the wind. So they would pull out the small shovels they carried with them, and with the help of an experienced expedition guide who was also on the upper slopes, they began digging, eventually making a space wide enough for two people to be completely inside, away from the wind. Even though they had been descending for hours, the trio was at 19,600 feet, just 700 feet below the summit, on a flat area known as the football field. It was here at 1 a.m. on Tuesday, May 28th, that they sent an SOS message from a satellite device, stating they had summited Denali, but were hypothermic and unable to descend. Now it's not clear exactly what happened next, if there were some conversation or disagreement, but one of the climbers would eventually continue his descent, and he was able to make it back to high camp at 17,200 feet, where he was then rescued off the mountain. The other two climbers, however, were stuck in the cave at 19,600 feet. Yusuf's condition was only worsening by the hours, while his expedition partner tried to desperately care for him. As the weather began to slightly ease, the experienced guide who had helped them dig the cave would have to begin descending the mountain for his own safety, once again leaving the two climbers in the cave alone. Wednesday would come and pass, with the weather only worsening. At this point, the weather had gotten so bad that there was no other climbers on the upper slopes. Yusuf and his climbing partner were hanging by a thread. They had been above high camp for over two days at this point, and there was no end in sight. It wasn't until Thursday night that the wind began to let up enough for a helicopter to attempt to rescue. Now the wind was by no means gone. It was whipping the helicopter around, making it nearly impossible to fly. But the park rangers knew they didn't have very long if there was any chance to save the two climbers. As the pilot made his way up the slopes, he would spot a climber on the football field, standing outside a small hole, waving his arms above his head. It was a desperate, final attempt to get the attention of the helicopter, and it worked. But the issue was, once again, the weather. The rangers quickly realized they would not be able to perform a rescue operation. Instead, they dropped a bag of supplies near the snow cave, with the hope that they would survive another night. On Friday morning at 7 a.m., the weather would finally ease, and another rescue helicopter would make its second attempt at reaching the snow cave, and this time, they were successful. The chopper was able to relay a rescue basket to the climber outside the cave, and after he climbed in, they would fly down to 7,200 feet, where he would be transferred to the local hospital. It was noted that he was in surprisingly strong condition and was walking without help. After he reached safety, he would tell the rangers his climbing partner Yusuf had died in the snow cave two days prior. Meaning, Thursday night when they were delivering supplies, the surviving member would be huddled inside a snow cave with the body of his friend. That same night, rescue climbers would reach the snow cave on foot and bring down Yusuf's remains so that he could be reunited with his family. Yusuf was the second death on Denali in 2024, with another climber falling over a thousand meters to his death on Denali Pass just two weeks prior. Yusuf's climbing partners would make it off the mountain, and currently they are still recovering with obviously a long road ahead of them. But they made it off Denali, and their friend didn't. <laughs>